This video is sponsored by Blinkist. On a species level basis, I think it's going to be important for us to figure out um, how we uh, coexist with advanced artificial intelligence such that the future of the world is controlled by the a combined will of the people of, of Earth. And so I think it's it's going to be important from a, from an existential threat standpoint to achieve um, a, a good AI symbiosis. But yeah, essentially, if, if you have a whole RAIN interface, everything that's encoded in memory, you could, you could upload. You could basically store your memories um, as a backup and restore the memories. And ultimately, you could potentially download them into a new body or into a robot body. The future is going to be weird. I think we have an incredible opportunity to limit human suffering to a tiny fraction of what it is today uh, in all kinds of different avenues. Pain uh, being the essence of suffering, we might be able to control that finally. Uh, and so many other diseases, so much other um, suffering in the world, I think the Neuralink device could help a lot with. On August 28th, Elon Musk's secret to startup Neuralink livestreamed a major update on their brain-machine interface that would turn humans into cyborgs. It's been a little over a year since they first unveiled their goal of connecting humans with artificial intelligence, with a chip that wires directly to your brain, and they've made some huge strides. So let's find out if it actually works, what changed, how far they are from human trials and their first customers, how much it will eventually cost, and what you'll be able to do with the Neuralink, including the crazier claims of telepathy, saving your memories, transferring your consciousness, and much more. In case you're not familiar with what Neuralink is or you need a refresher, here's a quick recap. You can skip to this timestamp on the screen if you already know about it, but you shouldn't because it hurts the YouTube algorithm. The biggest existential threat to humanity is not nuclear war, it's not climate change, it probably isn't even war, but artificial intelligence. As AI gets smarter, as AI can start doing things better and faster than us, as more and more jobs get automated and more and more people are left in the dust, where will that leave humans? No matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, I think we can agree that 90-99% to 99 of the population being unemployed, not having a purpose, probably isn't good. Now maybe you're thinking, well why don't we just ban AI research? Yeah, because banning stuff has always worked out so well in the past, and countries like China will definitely obey your arbitrary decrees. So that's not gonna work. But we do have another path. A path where instead of fighting against the current of AI, and might I add losing against that current, we could go with the flow and go along for the ride. The oldest part of our brains is our limbic system. Some people refer to this as the lizard brain. Roughly speaking, this is where all your emotions come from, all your primal wants and desires, fear, anger, fight or flight, all the stuff that evolved first for our basic survival. Around that lizard brain, we eventually evolved our cerebral cortex, the newer, smarter part of our brain that wraps around the limbic system. The cortex is kind of like the high level thinking part of your brain, and it's arguably what has allowed us to rise above the animal kingdom to where we are today. You can think of the cortex as literally the second layer of the brain. Today, the world is changing. The threat of artificial intelligence calls for a better, newer layer of the human brain that is able to catch up to its computer counterparts. What we need is the next layer of the brain, a third layer, a digital super intelligence layer. A layer where our brains are able to leverage AI instead of the other way around. So hopefully, we can have a tertiary layer, which is the kind of a digital super intelligence layer. And in fact, you, you already have this layer. So it's your phone, and your laptop, and the constraint is just the, how well you interface, the, the, the input and output speed. The thing that will ultimately constrain our ability to uh, be symbiotic with AI is bandwidth. This is where Neuralink comes in. A tiny computer that is mounted to your skull, hooks up wires directly to your brain. Those wires read and trigger the electrical pulses that happen within our neurons. So hopefully we can have a symbiosis with artificial intelligence instead of a matrix or Skynet situation. Neuralink will be able to input information to our brain, output information to the outside world, much faster than our archaic limbs will ever be able to do. But before Neuralink can get to a point where it gives us that symbiotic relationship we need, we have to take baby steps. So first, Neuralink will be used to cure a lot of the brain and spine problems that almost all of us will encounter in our lives. And because memory loss, hearing loss, blindness, paralysis, depression, strokes, and all the problems listed on the screen all boil down to electrical signals sent by neurons in your brain, if we had a device that corrects these signals, we would be able to solve almost all these problems that cause a lot of suffering in the world. The neurons are like wiring, um, and you kind of need an electronic thing to solve an electronic problem. Which brings us to today with the biggest question being, does it work? 
The biggest update they announced was their three little pigs demo. The first little pig was Joyce, the control of the experiment. She's just a normal pig without any implants. The second pig was playing around and didn't want to come out right away, so Elon had to move on to the third pig. Come on, Gertrude. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, we'll give Gertrude a second. And we'll move on to Dorothy. A name that I have a very hard time pronouncing. She used to have a Neuralink implant but had it removed. This was to demonstrate reversibility, meaning that if you got Neuralink installed in your brain but you then change your mind for whatever reason or you want to upgrade, you can get it removed and not have any permanent damage or side effects. At least that's what they showed. <laughs> Man, Gertrude, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and after a few good minutes, they were finally able to lure Gutrid out. Okay, great. As you may have guessed, Gutrid had a Neuralink installed in her brain and is still as happy and healthy as the other pigs. What's really cool is that Neuralink is actually working. They inserted the 1024 wires, also known as electrodes, near neurons that are connected to her snout. That way whenever she sniffs around or eats, those neurons fire a lot more than they normally would. Those electrical signals or spikes get picked up by the electrodes or sent to the Neuralink device and then are displayed on screen with a corresponding beeping sound. This is high energy pig. Those white dots you see on the top half of the screen are reading from each of those 1024 electrodes every time they pick up a brain signal. That blue graph on the bottom counts up all those white dots and displays them cumulatively. Gutrid has had the implant for 2 months already and both she and the Neuralink are still going strong. From there, since one Neuralink only has 1024 electrodes so it can only hook up to a small portion of the brain, they wanted to see how implanting two Neuralinks would fare. So that's what they did on three pigs with the same great results. We are able to show that you can actually have multiple neural links implanted, um, and again, healthy and happy and indistinguishable from a normal pig. So it's great that they're able to read neural spikes now, but what useful things have they been able to do with that information? Well, one experiment they showed off was they placed a pig with a neural link on a treadmill, they tracked the actual position of the pig's joints, and they looked at the readings from the implant and tried to predict the position of the joints. The actual position of the joints are the solid color graphs, and the predicted position of the joints are the light color graphs overlaid. And as you can see, it's pretty accurate. Now this may not sound like a big deal to you, but it is for people with major spinal cord injuries that can't control their limbs or entire bodies. When you have a severed spinal cord, you basically have severed wires in your body. So if you implanted a Neuralink in a person's brain, and another one after where the spinal cord is severed, when they think about walking, the first implant picks up that data and sends it to the second one past the spinal cord injury, thus allowing them to walk again. Like when you have a severed spinal cord, you essentially have a broken, broken wires. And so if, if you can just jump over those wires and transmit the singles, signals over those wires, uh, you can give somebody the ability to walk again, naturally. When they first unveiled their N1 prototype last year, the device itself was pretty complex, and getting it installed was pretty hard too. Although it was already going to be less evasive and scary compared to traditional brain surgery, you would still have to drill multiple holes into your skull for the electrodes, then tunnel those wires underneath your skin down to the back of your ear, and you would still need to have a device connected to the outside of your body behind your ear for the battery and Bluetooth. Meaning that you still wouldn't look completely normal, surgery is harder and will cost more money, and there's more things that can break. The new prototype they unveiled, version 0.9, is drastically simplified. It's just one piece about the size of a large coin, the wires are connected directly to the implant then to your brain, your skull is around 10mm thick and the device is around 8mm thick, so it will fit flush with your head. It will go underneath your skin so if you don't have hair there will be a tiny scar visible, but if you do have hair no one will be able to tell if you're a cyborg from the outside. And it does all the things you expect a smartwatch or a phone to do. All day battery life, measuring inertia, temperature, pressure, heart rate just like a smartwatch, and it also charges wirelessly, thank god, just like a smartwatch does. Uh, so there's actually a lot of functions that this device could do related to monitoring your health and warning you about a possible heart attack or stroke or other damage, as well as uh, sort of convenience features like playing music. Because they simplified the design so much, it's going to make developing the surgery robot a lot easier, which is one of their next biggest hurdles. Here's how the operation would work. You lift up the skin, cut out a coin-sized piece of the skull, the robot inserts the wires, the implant replaces the piece of the skull that was removed, and then it's closed with super glue, which is how a lot of wounds are closed. The goal is to have the surgery completely automated, where you can go in, not have to be put to sleep with anesthesia, be done in an hour, and thus leave the hospital on the same day. So you want the surgery to be as, as automated as possible, and the only way you can achieve the level of precision that's needed 
is with an advanced robot. All the while exceeding all the safety guidelines. You know, just as with, with Tesla, while it is legally possible to ship a one-star car, the only cars we make are five stars in, in every category. We, we actually maximize safety and we'll take the same approach here at Neuralink. Last year, they unveiled their first robot prototype that was able to insert all those electrical wires into the brains of mice and monkeys. Today, the robot looks a lot more refined and was actually used on all the pigs. So the Neuralink team has been able to install working implants in pigs partially using their robot. So far, they haven't shown any major side effects in the pigs. The implants are working and are able to read the electrical spikes from the neurons of the pigs. And they've been able to interpret and use that data for things like predicting joint movements. So how far out is it before you can get one installed yourself? Assuming you want one. The biggest challenges remaining involve the material science, making sure the wires and materials last in the very corrosive environment of your brain. Another problem is fully automating the surgery from start to finish with the robot. Another major one is working out all the logistics for productionizing a very complicated digital medical device. And just like the first Neuralink presentation, the goal of this latest one is to attract more talented people to help them solve all these problems. Right now, they have about 100 people on their team. So if you have any skills that could help, maybe you should apply and be a part of history. Another major accomplishment is that they received the FDA's Breakthrough Device designation, which is the FDA's program to fast-track devices that could cure really severe diseases like dementia, paralysis, etc. Which means we are one step closer to human trials. The first problems they aim to solve are spine injuries like we mentioned earlier. If somebody is um, like a severe spinal cord injury, you know, to the degree that they have um, very limited control even uh, over their facial muscles, with, with this implant, you can actually, just by thinking, you can output um, words and you can you can type and you can control a computer control a phone but as Neuralink is able to wire up more and more of the brain we're going to be able to do some pretty sci-fi stuff you could actually give somebody supervision you could have like uh, ultraviolet or infrared name your frequency and you can just dynamically adjust the sensor or have se sensors that feed into the visual cortex across a wide range of, of frequencies and, ac and actually have uh, superhuman vision. Telepathy. A lot of our uh, brain thought capacity is goes into compressing our thoughts into words, and then you think of like the, the, the data rate of words. Words are a very slow, very low data rate, and and we're putting a tremendous amount of mental energy into compressing the concepts and thoughts in our head into words, and then slowly talking. Speech is so very very slow. Uh, we could actually send. The, the true thoughts that we can obviously have far better communication because we can convey the actual concepts, the actual thoughts uncompressed to somebody else. And I'll be honest, I really want to get this. Like I'm willing to be one of the first test subjects to get this. But I also know that data breaches, hacking, mass surveillance from companies and governments happen literally all the time, which is already bad enough when it exposes your superficial privacy, but our inner thoughts. So they also address how they're approaching security. One of the things that we're ensuring is to make sure that a lot of the interactions with the brain data is gonna be encrypted and authenticated. And it really gives us a unique opportunity to embed security as part of our design from the get-go. And really making sure that we protect the IO to the brain away from uh, any potential attacks and really minimizing the attack surface. You know, we have in-house security expertise and we're also working with external parties to you know, do audits and perform penetration testing. So let's say you're like me and you're okay with taking the risk to be a part of history and to be honest, to get an edge. How much will your brain upgrade cost? Elon didn't give a launch price estimate, but he did say that it's gonna be very expensive to start, but that price will dramatically drop as they scale up with the goal of getting it down to a few thousand dollars, which includes a surgery. And I think that's possible. I think it should be possible to get it similar to um, LASIK and, and then the device electronics itself, um, I think will, will not be very expensive because it actually does, does use a lot of the parts that are made in extremely high volume in tens of millions of, of units uh, for uh, smartphones and, and smartwatches and wearables in general. Which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Sure, many people don't have a few thousand dollars on their hands, but many of those same people also take out loans for very stupid stuff that costs more, like TVs, furniture, useless degrees. So taking out a loan to upgrade your brain power or to cure a disease you have to make you a more productive member of society, that's a pretty solid deal. So the question remains, given what you know about the risk of AI, and also given what you know about the privacy risk, would you get one of these yourself? Right now, if it can give me a competitive edge, if it can help me to stay healthier and alert me of any neurological diseases popping up before they get out of hand, I probably would. And this is coming from a person that reasonably values my privacy, especially against governments being that I'm probably on a lot of watch lists. So let me know what you would do in the comments below.
Like Elon mentioned, one of the biggest bottlenecks we have against AI is how our input and output speed is pretty trash especially with everyone having the average reading speed of a mere 200 words per minute. And as people's success in life becomes more and more reliant on how much information they can take in and make use of, if you don't improve your input speed, you're gonna be one of those people left in the dust. But until the day arrives where you can upgrade your brain with a few thousand dollars, I offer you the next best thing. Blinkist. Blinkist takes the best, most impactful nonfiction books and turns them into crisp 15 minute discoveries that you can listen to while you're doing the more mundane things in life like commuting, eating, cleaning, you name it. That way you can take back some of that wasted life and turn them into productive, easy moments for learning. Like this blink on the book Superhuman Innovation Transforming Business with Artificial Intelligence. Or this one on the future home in the 5G era, Next Generation Strategies for Hyperconnected Living. And many, many more, all around 15 minutes or less. That way you can get through a ton of books you would've wasted money on fast and dive deeper into the ones that you connect with if you want to. The artificial intelligence and automation threat is very real, so if you're currently not in the place you want to be in life, isn't right now the best time to get ahead while artificial intelligence is still relatively in its infancy? The AI clock is ticking, the clock of your life is ticking, and with Blinkist, you have a very good way of improving that input speed so you can get ahead while you can. That's why Blinkist is offering the first 100 people unlimited free access for a week to try it out, and you get 25% off if you want the full membership afterwards when you sign up right now with the link below. So stop what you're doing, get ahead of those AI overlords before it's too late, and support this channel at the same time with the link below. So what do you guys think of Neuralink? These videos on like stuff about the future, for some reason are like always the most polarizing on this channel. Like robbing banks, tax evasion isn't polarizing, but new inventions are? So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you are new to this channel and you enjoyed this one, you will probably enjoy the future videos because we make video essays just like this one every single week on the most provocative and interesting stuff in the world of business just like this thing. So if you want to join the party, you can click that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell below. And remember, you can always dislike and unsubscribe and leave me your best hate comments below. If you want to support this channel financially, check out today's sponsor. And if you want like behind the scenes stuff, memes, me complaining about stuff, we have a very fun thing going on over at instagram at jaketrend.io so if you want like that kind of stuff you can follow me over there that's gonna wrap it up for this video thank you so much for watching you've been awesome i've been jake stay dangerous out there and i'll see you guys in the next one i missed you baby sweet <laughs> thank you